All right, so the U.S. Open, check. That leaves one more major, the Open Championship, that's coming up next month. We'll take a look, of course, at that, including the prep, the Scottish Open, and the next several weeks, heading up until the final major of the season, beginning tonight with the Travelers. And the Travelers Championship is actually going to be the final signature event of 2024. How, uh, how quickly time flies, Jared. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to how to move on, how to move fast at U.S. Open. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've struggled to focus in on this week just because what we saw yesterday was just so awesome. That's just like, uh, you know, all the all the crappy finishes, all the crappy tournaments we go through all year. It's kind, of, it's like for that Sunday. Like, I, like I'll never forget a lot of those shots. I won't forget where I was watching, who I was watching with. It's like freaking awesome, awesome day of golf. It was it was great. Yeah, uh, especially and most importantly because you had. Uh, two top players going at it. You also had USA versus uh, England going at it. So, uh, or, or Britain going at it. Uh, Great Britain, Europe, I guess is probably the best way of saying it. And uh, bring all those Ryder Cup uh, ties into it. So, yeah, it was mm -hmm. it was as good as I think we could have uh, uh, anticipated. And um, it was a crazy up and down Sunday. Uh, you kind of knew as soon as uh, Bryson started to... I mean, you knew he wasn't going to be as effective because it was impossible on that golf course to have back-to-back -back days like he had on Saturday. Right. And so you, but and then you saw it happening. The only question was Rory, and then as soon as Rory started to uh, make a run, then you were like, "All right, this is going to be interesting." Uh, but yeah, that was pretty uh, disappointing yeah. for the Rory McIlroy camp to go from. I mean, it was like he was constantly chasing. And then as soon it took, it was like it's like it went so fast. Like he went from being up two, to yeah. then all of a sudden just losing that lead so fast. And uh, everybody knows what happens after that. Yeah, like for for most of Sunday, I thought Bryson and Rory felt destined to win, and you, you knew only one of them could win. And then they, you know, they Bryson tried to give it away first, right? Like he he was he was kind of the first one to slip up. And then, and like you said, Rory gets his two shot lead. Then it kind of all, all goes to hell on the final what four holes for him. So, in, insane. Bryson's bunker shot, insane. Um, I hope, like, I think, I think Rory is kind of the bigger story. But I hope, like, what Bryson has done doesn't get lost in all this because just the career he's he's thirty years old and the career he's had already is just insane. You think about like the changes he's made. He he's been like three different golfers in one career, right? He was like he was like the brainiac when he came in, nerd, and he became you know big. Big, brief, big, beefy Bryson. And now he's like, you know, something in between. So it's just been super interesting to kind of watch him evolve. I, I think what's going to happen is, is everybody, for the most part, look, you can only have one clip to represent uh, a win. And the clip is yeah. going to be the up and down. So, yes, sure. he will be remembered for that. But if people want to start breaking it down for a couple of minutes, then they're definitely going to. That's when they're going to bring up Rory and they're going to show his two short misses. And I mean, I don't know about you, but as soon as he missed the first one, I knew he was done. Uh, you just had to feel that way. It was like, no, that's that. He just left yeah. the door open and I can't yeah. see DeShambo not kicking it in after that. He also made an awesome up and down on 17, though, including like a four foot putt for par. He did. On 17. He did. So I was like, okay, he's kind of got it back together. Yeah, but then know. immediately it was, yeah. you know, it's. Yeah. The, yeah. the putt the putt on 18 was, was was not an easy putt. Like for a three and a half footer, that thing moved a ton. You still got to make it, obviously. Yeah, but you got to make it. You want to win a major, yeah. you got to make that. But yeah. like that that miss was not as bad as, as the, the two and a half footer that was like that straight and he just yanked it. Yeah, and that just shows you, man, even the great players, uh, the problem is, is it's not that he hadn't won, because he had. It was about the major. Yeah. and I, Yeah. I can't wait to see how he bounces back from this. Like, I, I don't know. That's that's tough. Well, he's got a lot of explaining to do, too, after storming off and not talking to anybody. So that's the first yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, especially Rory, I don't blame him. He's done so much for the tour and you know, with the media, like I don't blame him for not talking once after a loss like that. The Shambo, on the other hand, uh, this just shows you how just bad it is for the sport that you're only seeing the Shambo four times a year. That's it. 
You're seeing these guys yeah, four times a year. Yeah. Nobody's watching Live. Nobody cares yeah. about Live. Even if you win, nobody cares. So you get four times, and I, Ryder Cup. That's it. They're still allowed in the Ryder Cup, right? They. I thought the U.S. Oh, oh yeah, the U.S. did take Live guys. Cause yeah, because Brooks Brooks was in it. So, but, but Bryson will not. Bryson will not be at the Olympics. No, he won't. In the U.S. So. No. Um, that's that's another yeah, it, like, thing that just happened. Was, yeah, yeah we, all, we all know now the Olympic team and what they're going to. Now, the, right. the, the, the Americans have four. Why is that? Why do they get four and everybody else can only have a maximum of two? Yeah, I, I, I was actually reading this um, a few days ago and I already forgot exactly how it works. But you get you get up to four people if you have like four inside the top 20 in the OWGR. Oh, which okay. The US, which the U.S. does. So right. I think I think I don't know if like the I don't know if U.K. or whatever might end up getting. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know if there's other countries that are going to have four as well. But um, no, yeah, I there's, didn't notice there's that. a few. Nope. There's a few different, um, few different criteria for how they select those. Yeah, I th- I'm pretty sure they're the only ones who have four. Okay. So, uh, but that makes sense. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, that's the thing. I think that really I take out of it is that. Because just imagine if you're somebody that's just a novice fan and you're trying to learn the sport. And there's a lot of that happening all the time in every sport. You get that certain percentage. Maybe it's just 5 or 10%. And they don't really know what's going on. They're trying to find out. And they want to know if this is something they want to get into. And then they go, oh, that's pretty awesome. Okay. And then all of a sudden they turn on golf the next week. And they're like, well, where's that DeShambo guy? They turn on the next week. Where's that DeShambo guy? And it's like somebody has to explain to them what the hell's going on, and it's just not good. It just isn't. So, well, um, there was a there was an there was an agreement or something with the uh, Saudis and, and PIF or whatever. I, I don't follow it too closely, but it sounds like something's happening again. So maybe you know by this time next year, we'll be seeing Bryson <laughs> back back in most of these tournaments. All right. Well. Is is Br- is Bryson the second best player in the world? I mean, I don't know if I'm being like a prisoner of the moment. He just won a major, but I feel like. Yeah, what he's being done a prisoner all, of the moment. Yeah, what he's done in all three. Oh, all right, so who, who's the? Who's oh, you the mean second best you're just talking about? Are you talking about like this like year? Right now, right? Or you're talking well, about just, just overall? Right, right now, like right now, you have a golf tournament. Scheffler is most likely to win. Who would you put ahead of Bryson? He'd be. He'd I'd be probably two for me. put Shuffley. See, Shuffley's <laughs> the shambo because this is the hard part. Because, first of all, you, if you're saying, well, who, who do you want at the Open Championship? And I haven't looked at the Shambo's Open Championship resume. I don't know if he's good on links. I haven't looked at that yet. Um, yeah. But let's just say, let's just say he's average on, on links. And I, I would say, well, yeah, look at how well he's playing on majors this year. He's, he's, he, but if you're just saying it's a regular tournament next week and DeShambo gets to play in it, the guy has not been consistent this year on the live tour. So how do I know? I mean, I don't know. He only plays well in majors, but he's only played in three PGA yeah. tour events as well. I just don't know. It's a guess. I don't have to guess Shoffley because I know the guy is a machine in the top 10, top 15. The shampoo hasn't been, you know, so I don't know. It's tough. It's a tough call. Yeah. I think, I think but, yeah, I think that's what makes it tricky to the live aspect. I, I mean, I can't imagine Bryson is, trying as hard as he can on live when he's coming out here and finishing competing in all these majors and not competing on live. Like, I got to hundred percent, even if it's like, even if it's subconscious, like he's just not all there for live. But the, the point I wanted to make and why I, I would call him the second best player in the world right now is that again, the previous versions of Bryson would not have been good on this golf course. I, I said on last week's show, I didn't like Bryson on this golf course. I didn't think it was a good fit for him. He struggled in the past in, in the short game on this, you know, the tight lies, all that type of stuff. He's, figured that out he's he's just you know taking his game to another level and it's just super impressive to see what he's done he still has the power he's accurate off the tee now he's added the short game to the mix he's always been a really good putter the iron the iron play i think at times still comes and goes it was awesome for most of this tournament but i mean he's he's just he, he's better now than he was when he won at winged foot i think all right well well i would agree with that but let's also take a look at it this way though if Rory doesn't choke, he doesn't yeah. win. So, mm-hmm. and then what are we saying? Are you saying, oh, DeChambeau's the best man. He was second, second, and sixth. No, we're not saying I'm that. Like, we're saying, well, he has a I'd one. Say, yeah, I'd probably say Rory's two and Bryson's three. Yeah, probably, yeah. One. But even then, we're talking about Bryson going 
second or what sixth oh absolutely he deserves to be in the top five conversation lock for sure lock because who else you putting in there you're putting shoffle and then who you putting morikawa in there in the top five ludwig ludwig's probably my top five over morikawa yeah they're i mean they're 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 both there i think those are probably the next guys you're, you're talking about right yeah, I don't really think there's anybody else right. in the discussion yeah. really now. Yeah, so if you're saying so if you're saying like Scheffler, Xander, Rory, uh, Bryson, top four, and then Ludwig, Kyle, probably the next two. And again, we're talking about now, but it's it's if we're if, let's just say if we're trying to figure out, um, like let's just say uh, we're starting the season again. Um, mm-hmm. A lot's going to depend also, at the end of this season, what happens to Victor Hovland's game. Yeah. Because he still has time to do what he did last year, which is get hot at the end and look like he's awesome and like the best player in the world. So, uh, but as of today, uh, with your question in hand, uh, no no doubt DeChambeau is now uh, one of those, uh, uh, not only top five, but you could probably even put him in the top three or four for sure. Um, because yeah, I can't put back where I had of him after what happened. Uh, and that, that's just, uh, it's tough. And now, mm-hmm. um, you know, I wonder, I, you know what, I, I think this will, I just get the feeling this is going to, this is going to be, uh, uh, cause we know Rory, I haven't checked the, 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 uh, course, uh, the open championship course and, and, and how mm-hmm. Rory might compare to other open championship courses where Rory is of course very good at. Um, but I would, I don't know. I'd probably... You know what? I, I I might bet more on Rory. I, I think this will be good for him in a way. I, I don't think he's going to put him, his head in a hole and he's a Patrick Cantley type uh, or even Shoffley before he won where we were, where we don't trust him and they don't win. I just mm-hmm. I, I think he's too good. And I just think that maybe this – because realistically, and I know he's been in a lot of these situations for uh, many years before. He's, of course, he's won 13 years ago his last major. But – this is, I think, the closest, really. He hasn't been in this spot like where he yeah. completely choked in the last couple of holes. We have never seen that from him. I don't think ever. I don't think I've ever seen him choke like this before in a major. So I think that'll be good for him. Next time, yeah, he, worry, especially man. if he's in this, again, he's got a two-stroke lead in the Open Championship next month. Yeah. I think that'll be good for him, and he'll be able to close it. Yeah, I'm... Um... I'm less sure than you. I'm sure I, I won't be betting Rory because I don't think he's going to get a discount. I mean, he, he's going to be – His eyes are going to be low. Yeah. 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 So, I, I don't know. I, I, that's why I'm just – I have no idea where he's going to go from here. It's super interesting just to, to see how this goes because, yeah, I don't I don't remember a time over this drought that he was that close to winning. I can't imagine there was a time because he can't really get closer to winning than, than that. So, I, I guess I, I didn't realize it. So, he just – he withdrew. Yes, he withdrew. He announced it like um, three or four hours ago. He said he's done until the Scottish Open. Okay. So, so can, does he take a fine? I, yeah, because this is a second missed. Because he he skipped Heritage, right? No, remember he played it, and we couldn't wonder. We were wondering why. We were okay. like, why wouldn't the, he have used his mulligan at the RBC right. Heritage? So is this the first? Uh, oh, you know what? I think, he hasn't played. Wait, wait. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm probably gonna answer my own question. He probably had to play because you probably can't not play it two years in a row. So okay, because yep, he missed it right. 2023, yep. he had to play RBC Heritage this year. Yep. That's the only thing I could think of. So I, I think this is the first elevated he's missed, right? So I don't think I think he I think he's oh, allowed to miss one. Okay. I think so. All right. Well, I, look, I, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not not, surprise. not surprising. No, it's not. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it uh, it was a, an amazing day. No question about it. It's good for golf. But like I said, what's really bad about it is uh, you turn on golf this week in a big event. Where all the best players in the world are, and now the two guys who made the story are not playing neither of them are playing so at least you could have a story of rory being there and how, you know what, can, what wow you know let's see how rory reacts nope not gonna see it uh, uh but yeah so we yeah i'm also interested to see obviously not you know not that shuffler was bad but for his standards he was bad so oh. curious to see where he goes from here and then the other the other guy I'm curious about is ludwig who he oh. he kind of ejected after you know having the the, the lead there Heading into Saturday, so I'm kind Pressure. of curious to see how, how, how he bounces. Oh, yeah. I mean, Ludwig looks like a robot out there. Just, 
every swing is perfect. He, he never looks nervous, but you know, I think that was a reminder that he's he's still a human like the rest of us. And he definitely, um, you know, for first time U.S. Open with the lead, all that stuff. Like he, it, it was too too big for him for now. He'll 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 win a U.S. Open. I'm like super sure of it. He just has the yeah. perfect game for it, but um, too too soon for him. Yep. And again, that's the reason why when we look at the odds every week and we see these low numbers, uh, that's the reason uh, we'll even say it. Can't take them, not enough experience, not at 14 to 1 or whatever uh, Ludwig is each week, which he pretty much is, even in majors. And um, and then, like we just said with Rory, uh, could he win an Open Championship? Yeah, but he's going to be 8 to 1, maybe even 7 to 1 because of his history in that event. But... Are you willing to roll the dice on Rory coming back and winning the Open Championship that quickly at that number? It's just, and now Scheffler, because uh, this is you know good point. I mean, what's I mean? Just take uh, let's see, just taking a look at uh, his odds right here. It's same same as always. At, <laughs> you know, plus three sixty at Draft uh, uh, Kings, and. I'm sorry, but after the way he played, and let's remember, he he was he did nothing on Sunday of the week right. before when Morikawa had opportunity after opportunity to beat him and couldn't take it to him, and and that's and and, and so that's why it was refreshing in a way to see somebody play the way like DeChambeau did because even though he struggled on Sunday, it wasn't like he choked or he just didn't have it. It was a tough freaking golf course. Uh, yeah. And he still made really good plays, like the one to uh, to win it on the 18th. Something we just aren't seeing enough. Why? Because the guys that we are probably uh, missing, the guys that do have the ability to beat Scotty and some of these and go up head to head to them, are playing a live. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah. So I mean, I'm sorry. There's just no way now. I mean, Scotty, sorry. Uh, after the way he played uh, on that Sunday, after the way he played last week. Um, yeah. No, uh, I need to see how he's going to play this week before I. And, and by the way, he, we know he doesn't play all that great at the Open Championship either. And and now right. I think the questions are going to start to come about. I mean, it, I what, what's up? What's Scott yeah, is, was, Masters? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> I was yeah, I was I was saying that to one of my buddies when we were watching on Sunday that Chef, it feels like he's been underwhelming in the majors, just relative to how dominant he's been outside the majors, like outside of the Masters, like. Even I think he he came like third in the U.S. Open last year, but he he was never yeah. in contention on the back nine on, on Sunday. So it, it does feel like he's been underwhelming. The other thing I'll say about Scotty, it's funny looking at the stats. He was still fifth best in the, in the entire field on approach at the U.S. Open. He he had a he had a bad driving week for him, but he still gained strokes off the tee. It was it was it was like old school Scotty. He lost six strokes putting. He was one of the worst putters in the field. So like it, he he really didn't play as bad as the finish would suggest. Um, I, I, I'm not like, I'm not concerned about him going forward. I don't, I don't think he'll win this week. I don't think it's a great fit for him. It's, you know, week after a major, all that stuff. He's, he's, he definitely could use a week off <laughs> with all that's gone for him. So I, like, I, I'm not, I'm not as scared of him this week as I have been in previous tournaments. I also don't think he's, you know, about to start a, a cold stretch here. Is he another one that hasn't missed a signature event? I don't think he has. I don't recall him missing he, um, one. Yeah, what well, what did he skip after the baby came? Was that not a signature event? Uh, that yeah, was right after the Masters. Yeah. Well, you had the RBC Heritage. He won right after the Masters, and after that, uh, only if there was one between the RBC Heritage and the PJ Championship was right. that was that the Wells Fargo? Oh yes, yes. That he didn't it. play Wells Fargo. Okay. Right when yeah when when Rory got his win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. So. Uh, before we do get dive into this uh, for this week, uh, let, let's talk about the uh, the golf course. So we have to keep this in mind. I mean, this is the strange one because this is like an easy golf course. And to have like an easy golf course, TPC River Highlands, as a signature event, it's very strange. But, hey, they got Travelers. Travelers has a lot of money. So they're, they're, they're putting the money up and good for them. But it's just an easy golf course. You know, I'd have to think if I'm the, look if I'm the PGA Tour in a way, wouldn't you? Now, I don't know what their connection is with TPC River Highlands. I mean, I don't recall this being some sort of great, you know, legacy golf course in any way, shape, or mm -hmm. form. So, I'd be like, look, if you're gonna keep 
you know, putting money up for signature event. Maybe we find a different venue. I think, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's not, it's not the most exciting course. Um, I think part of the reason I, I believe this is the second most attended regular PGA tournament behind only waste management. I think they get, they get awesome crowds here. So I'm sure that's part of it. Like they're, they're, they're not leaving this course and, you know, might as well have it be elevated. And I'm sure this is one that's going to rotate, right? Like it's not, it probably won't be elevated next year. I would assume. Wow. That's, um, uh, well, yeah, but that's only yeah, but one, I think right? That's I think it. it's only one of them that gets off the board uh, each year. Is it? Is it just one? Yeah, I, I thought think it was maybe so. One or two, but yeah. But anyways, I think part of it is the attendance. Um, yeah, just go, going back to the course quick. This is the second shortest course they play all year. It's a par seventy. It's less than sixty nine hundred yards. So um, yeah, that that's a big thing here is that the the, the shorter accuracy accuracy type players have a better chance here than they do at a lot of these other signature events that are played at you know these long tough golf courses yeah that's uh definitely an advantage no question about it or at least uh it it, it uh, eliminates uh the disadvantage that uh those short right. hitters normally have so that's good i always think that's good uh the more the merrier it helps us out um uh taking a look at uh, just some of the winners since uh let's see even if we just go back to 2017 um i mean you have Let's see, one major, two major, three major, four major, five major winners have won here since 2017. So, um, uh, and again, it's only been a signature event one year. That was, because uh, it was last year, right? Signature event last year? Yeah, it was, yep. Yeah, Keegan Bradley winning last year at 23. The score, that was, I think, a, vi- uh, a record. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. So, um, not the par, but the overall score of 257, it was 23 under par. I think the record, I believe, is 25 under par. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of what we could see once again. And that's and I know it's not in your stats, but that is even the one thing that I was looking at was uh, I was taking a look at some, some like matter of fact, I was taking a look at Oberg and a few other golfers because uh, uh, mm-hmm. I was like, you know what, I'm thinking of maybe taking Oberg this week, and then I looked at it, but I want to see how he plays. On I want to see what his uh, record is this year on the easy golf courses, and I'm like, mm-hmm. wait a second, not good. And if you look mm-hmm. at it, he's had the three yeah. easiest golf courses he's played at are like his worst results. Uh, Century, uh, Sony, and Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the three of his worst results of the season. As soon as I saw that, I was like, nope. I'll, 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 now look, of course it's, it's a big money event. That is, is something they have to take into account, but right. it is, it is a little bit of a cautionary kind of deal there when you, when you notice that. Yeah. You know, I, um, considered making that part of my model this week, how, you know, how guys do on quote unquote easy courses. I decided against it though. Cause like, despite what Keegan shot last year, the winning scores here are, usually more like in the mid to high teens. So actually, if, if you go to Fantasy National, the site I use for stats, like they actually tell you which percentage of rounds at each well, course that's is true. classified in yeah. an easy, average, or difficult. 60% of the rounds at this course actually fall in their average scoring bucket. So, But, but it's still... To me, to me it was- it's still like the last it's still four. The easy side. You know, it's nineteen yeah. under, nineteen under, twenty three under. Harris English was thirteen under in twenty twenty one. There was one year, mm-hmm. and maybe it was yeah. weather related. But 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 and, and it's true. I mean, I I, I I don't know about Sony. I know Century. Wait wait yeah. I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, Who, Cent- Century. The, yeah, Century's the one that's twenty eight Cent- under par or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Sony is more like this, I believe. And Texas yeah. also, I believe, is a little bit like this. Um, but, yeah, it's true. It's not century, which is another right. silly thing. Uh, yeah. But they're never getting rid of that. So um, right. but you would just wonder, man, and we talked about it. I mean, how could, come on, toughen up the golf course a little bit. Put more rough, you know, grow a little rough or something. I mean, come on, man. speed up the greens. There's some ways you can mani- manipulate uh, that golf course. Um, anyway, so let's take a look at your stats. Let's see. What do we got here? Okay. So, uh, we've got top 10 in strokes gained, T to green, par 70s, under 7,200 since 2022, and top 10 in par 4s from 400 to 450 just this year alone. Yeah, we have the course history too, which really all three of these stats are kind of different ways to look at the same thing. 
you know, course history, obviously, is course history. Strokes gain T to green on the short par 70. So, again, T to green is taking out putting. So, we're not factoring how they're putting on these short courses because that, you know, shouldn't matter whether it's short or long, how you're putting. But, you know, basically how you're, how you're hitting off the tee and how you're hitting your irons on these short golf courses. And then this par four between 400 and 450 yard range, we have eight of the holes on this course fall in this range, which, you know, for, for the PGA Tour, these are shorter par four. So, you know, who's, who's doing best on these short par fours. You see some, some crossover between these lists, which, which makes sense. You know, I think the, um, it's funny that the top 10 in um, par four is 400 to 450. That's like a who's who of like short hitters, right? Like Bez is a short hitter. Poston plays well in these short courses. Yep. Henley is a classic short hitter. Uh, Harmon. So I got it's kind of all the guys you, you'd expect pop up there littered with the elites, you know, Scheffler, Xander, those guys are going to show up on any top 10 list. Yeah, the, the uh, couple of them are on both lists, and it includes Benny on and Post on. And I think that's, oh, Henley. Henley, Poston, and on, right? Those are the only three on both. Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. So yep. keep that in mind, and that's good because I do have one of those. Uh, matter of fact, let's go ahead. Where are we? Let's go ahead and uh, pop. Uh, up our picks so these are our total picks uh, there's i've got five this week uh jared's got four uh jared's top pick being cantley my top being matsuyama and you can see uh how we uh, laid it out uh, with our 100 bucks we, we uh, invested in each week and how we uh, divvied it up uh, within our picks okay so let's go ahead and we'll get into actually yeah we'll, we'll get into our best of the rest and our one and dones and uh, when we're done here um, going over uh, our picks and anything else so let's uh, let me see let's go ahead and, uh, and get started first of all with this uh, top group here. well our, let's, I'll tell you what let's, let's go ahead and um, and and go right into uh, your top pick being Cantley because to me, and 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 Cantley is definitely is on my list. Is on my best of the rest, and I and I and I was probably going to take him as well. Um, and Annette, and, and, but I kind of felt that if you took him, and I know I, I I then then I was like where I'm at now, which is I'm. It's almost one of those situations where I feel like it's too easy of a pick <laughs> yeah. because of what he did. We know. I mean, he had never played that well before in a major. And by the way, I'm, I, I was saying to myself going into Sunday, I was like, if Cantley wins this, I know how he's going to win it. It's the U.S. Open. He's going to win it if Shambo or one somebody, you know, chokes and right. he goes in, puts in a score, and then somebody <laughs> goes like triple bogeys the 18, like Deshambo and can't. That's how Cantley would win his first major. But uh, he played pretty well. But as usual, he missed putts he could have made oh, uh, yeah. on Sunday. That's typical Cantlay. But it was a, you know, a, a big effort for him at a major, which was my point. Right. A plus, throw in the fact that he has a really good resume on this golf course, results-wise, including his best last year. And it's like, yeah, come on. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a good number, but it kind of scares me, you know, because it's almost too yeah. easy in a way. Too easy of a pick. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think getting him at, you know, he, he was he was 25 to 1 this morning, then he dropped to 22. I think he dropped to 20 after Rory, Rory withdrew. Um, even 20, though, I think it's, it's like it's like yeah. a fair fair number. Like, I don't think, you know, I don't think the, the number is saying it's like too easy a pick. So I'm, I'm yeah. happy to take it. Um, it it's funny. Cantley's putter actually carried him for the first three days at the U.S. Open. Like his ball striking was okay, it wasn't great. On Sunday, the ball striking was unbelievable, and he could not make a putt. So you know, he, he kind of failed to put both of those together for any one round. But I thought it was a super encouraging performance. Now, and, and can't lie to I want to say, like a lot of guys, a lot of high end players coming off a major performance like that, I'd be worried about a letdown the following week. But like Cantley needs a freaking win. Yeah, like, he needs to win. He's got momentum. He's coming to this course he loves. He's fourth in course history on our list. There, he is sixteenth. Um, and T to green on short, those short par 70s. He's the fifth best Pete Dye player in this course. We didn't mention that. This is a Pete Dye design track. Um, Cantley has done well on Dye courses throughout his career. Bent greens are his best putting surface. He's the oh, 15th just keep, best keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a 
perfect spot. It, like uh, you said, it's too easy. I totally agree with you. It makes too much sense, but you know, I, hey, I, I kill okay. myself if I kill myself if if can't lay one, and I didn't bet it because it was too. Oh hard. yeah, of course. Yeah. You have to take them. You have to. Yeah. You, it's just one of those things that, like, what you don't want to do is don't be betting the house out there. <laughs> because the two easy ones, those are the ones you'll get in trouble with betting the house. Just go ahead and bet them, and you know, bet a few bucks on them. Absolutely, but just don't never get too bet crazy. The house. Never, never bet no, the house. You're right. Never bet the house <laughs> unless you have two, um, and you don't have any kids or a wife. Right. All right. So, uh, let's see. Next up, now I have. See, my it kind of worked out this way, but. All of my guys are like all in the same kind of area. Matter of fact, when I made my picks about whatever, five hours ago, I had, I believe, four out of the five. Yes, Masiyama was the only one. The other four were all 35 to one. So I was in that same group at 35 to one. But now they've all kind of changed and moved up a little bit. But it, I mean, right here, all three of them are right here. Matsuyama, Finau, and Burns. And for me, Matsuyama was also kind of a no-brainer, like Cantley in a way. Because remember we talked about it last week. He, he's starting to play better again, and yeah. then here he goes, and he has another good week. So now he's trending really well. Back to back top tens. He's already got a win in the signature series. Thirteenth last year in his first appearance, which is solid. And I just think this uh, makes a lot of sense for a guy like Matsuyama, uh, yeah. uh, even though he's won already. And I know Cantley needs it more and all that, and and he's coming off a major. But I I just think he's got the disposition. To go out yep. there uh, and, and and get it done. As far as Finau, same thing. He is trending really as good as we've seen him trend maybe in the last couple of years. Uh, and we're not talking about winning Mexico or any of that crap. Uh, <laughs> but competing like he did, this is the best we've seen him in a major in a while. Uh, so his trend line is awesome. He only has one top 15 here. But if you look at some of the trends... Uh, there's a trend that says, um, and I think it might be eight or nine years or something like that, where uh, a lot of the guys who have won here never had like a top five before. So you don't have to have a really good history here uh, to win. So I think that's something just to keep in mind. And then Burns, who's on this page here, we both have talked a lot about Sam Burns, as you know, lately. And I just felt, well, you didn't take him. So I'm going to make sure that one of us does because he had one of his best major appearances, even though he was very quiet. Nobody noticed him. But I'm not sure if Burns has ever had a top 10 before in a major. I don't I don't think he has. Um, yeah, I I had some money on him last week, so I was following him. He was never really in the mix, but no. he, he it's funny. He um I think he was plus four in his first five holes on Thursday. And after that, he was, like, really good. So, yeah, I, I looked at all th three of these guys. It's funny. Hideki and Finau, I have the same concern. It's just can they make enough putts to win a tournament where, you know, you might have to get to 20-1 to one to win. But ball striking-wise, especially Finau, I mean, his ball striking has been awesome all, all year. He, he hasn't been that bad as a putter lately, which is all he needs to do. But, again, can he make enough to win here? Burns can definitely make enough putts to, to win here. I think it's a really good setup for Burns. You know, a lot, at least a few of the tournaments he's won – have been on these courses that you know get get up to uh you know 16 to, to 20 under par all right uh and then uh, moving on down uh the list here there's another one of my picks and there's your pick there on the bottom so i have henley you have connor's and i was considering connor's um, not sure if I would have taken him, and uh, he almost made my best of the rest. Uh, so I, I, I was giving Connors a look. Why not? He, he, he was able to squeeze in in the very last possible uh, hole or minute or day to get into the Olympics and overtake Adam Hadwin. So he has to feel real good about that. But he's usually Mr. Top 20, but yet he's got two top 10s in his last three. So uh, I'm sure you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing, plus ninth last yep. year. That's also very important. And Henley, uh, who you have, by the way, on your fantasy team, uh, had a, a very impressive showing, uh, played really well on Sunday, uh, and he's not really a great major player. So he finished uh, seventh, and his last five have all been in the top 30. Three of those are top 15s. He's played well in a couple of the signature events, fourth at Bay Hill, 10th at Wells Fargo, and he's had a good resume here. 
uh, you know, he's had one missed cut, but everything else has been uh, top 35, three top 20s, one, one, uh, two uh, top, actually a sixth place finish was his best result. And overall, he's got five top 10s and three top fives uh, in his last, um, uh, actually he has, I should say, overall, uh, he's got five top 10s, three top fives, and the seventh last week as one of his top 10. So, but that's the kind of guy he is. He doesn't have a lot of top 10s on the year normally, but I will say this about Russell Henley is that if you're going to take him, the best time of year to take him is this time of year. He seems to play better after the U S open. Matter of fact, last year was one of his best runs in the summer, uh, when he played really well in the playoffs. Um, so, uh, I felt, why not? Why not go with Henley? I, I don't like the number. I don't like him being around with all the top guy, top guns, yeah. but Hey, you never know. I mean, he's coming right after a major. Maybe he'll take advantage of it. Yeah. And again, like we said, with all those stats, like this course is tailor made for Russell Henley. If he's, if he's going to win, this is a good spot for it. Um, same kind of deal for Connors really. I mean, he's a shorter accuracy type player. We saw him, he was 10th on our, um, course history first in T to green on those short par 70s. Um, Corey Connors, I mean, just look just look in 2024, this entire season, second best player in this field in stroke scan approach. It's Scotty Shuffler, number one, Corey Connors, number two. He's also 14th best off the tee. The issue with Connors is always the short game, the around the green and the putting. But you look at his last three tournaments now, and by the way, his last three tournaments, he's come sixth at the RBC Canadian, 20th at Memorial, ninth at the U S open. So the results have been there. He's gained strokes around the green in all three of those. And he's gained strokes putting in two of the last three. So if he's like, I don't know if he's found something, it looks like he might've found something or at least he's on a bit of a hot streak around the green and, and putting wise. So if he can keep that rolling again, the, the off the tee and the approach stuff is always, you know, top notch. The only thing that I would be concerned with, uh, and that's the reason why I w- I'm not sure if I would, I, I would have had him in the running, but uh, cause I almost did, but I didn't. The only thing I'm concerned with is now that maybe what he found in the last three weeks was <laughs> Olympic motivation. And now right. that he's in, how yeah. does he play? Is that motivation mm-hmm. kind of done now? That's the only thing, but hopefully if he gets off to a good start, uh, that's probably what you're looking for is, is let's get off to a good start, get in this, you know, get in. Cause that's also something we haven't seen a lot of Connors, uh, really in his career. He, he really doesn't put himself in position to win very often. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a top, he's a top 20 guy. Yeah. He's like, see, we Kim, but... you know, he's yeah. one of these guys. It's just, yeah, top 30, top twenties, but top of the leaderboard. You just don't see it very often. Uh, as we, uh, swing on down here. So, um, three more of our picks. Speaking of Siwoo, he's not one of our picks because he's awful on this golf course. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Brian Harmon's on my list. Sepp Straka yeah. and Tom Kim are on your list. Uh, I was definitely looking at both of those. Why not? I've been picking them the last uh, couple of events. So I definitely was right there with both Straka and Kim too. But uh, Harmon is my pick, and I and I just look at the fact that he's been really good here. Matter of fact, he's got five top tens the last six years on this golf course. Uh, keeping in mind, he hasn't had a top ten since the players, um, but it's a signature event. You know, it's it's far off, far away away from the Open Championship defending it. That I'm not worried about that. So mm-hmm. uh, I think this is the perfect time to take him. Uh, maybe even the, the the best time to take him for the rest of the year, to tell you the truth, with the money that's at stake. Um, and then you've got Straka and Kim. And again, Straka does have a 10th place finish on this golf course. Even though he didn't play all that well last week, he does have four top 10s in his last six with three top fives. And then yeah. the other guy, of course, being Tom Kim, who we have spoken a lot about on this show recently. Um, and once again, he put himself in position to have a good Sunday and then he just, uh, just I don't know, he lost lost something. So there still seems yeah. to be something that's just not entirely there with him. But if he can put it all together, especially on an easier golf course, then it's a pretty good bargain. Yeah, and of course that fits Tom Kim much better. I mean, you know, he, he's a shorter accuracy hitter. You look at the couple wins he has on the PGA Tour, they're on short courses. So the, the fact that he's been able to have the finishes he has really the last two weeks at the U.S. Open and, and at Memorial, you know, courses that don't really fit his game, they're, they're too long for him um, to, to, like, really compete, I think. But you even look at the numbers, like, it was, it was you know, we know it was bad for Tom Kim basically through, what, like, mid-July. 
And at the PGA Championship, he started to figure it out. He's he's now gained strokes off the tee in four of his last five. He's gained strokes on approach in four of his last five. Um, and again, I, just, I think this is a good course fit for him where we really haven't seen that in the past couple of weeks. So. He's made nine straight like, cuts now. So yeah. it, it seemed like you said, it seemed like it was just yesterday that he was struggling yep. mightily. Right. Yeah. So I, I think he's got it figured out. I think, you know, we're still kind of getting a bit of a discount from what he would have been a year ago. He probably would have been 30 to one in this field a year ago. Um, and then yeah, Seb Straka is just a form play for me. I mean, this guy, even last week, the, dis- the disappointing stuff last week for him was all around the green and putting the off the tee and approach was still awesome. You just look at the last two months in this field, he's the 14th best player off the tee and the sixth best player on approach. And he is also generally a good putter. Like he's, I don't worry about him making enough putts to win this. Remember when he won, what did, what did he win last year? When he almost shot the 59 on Sunday, was that John Deere? I want to say whatever it was like he, this guy can definitely fill it up. He can go low. He can make birdies. I'm not worried about this, you know, score being too low for Sepp Straka to win. So I just think he, he's a guy that's been trending towards a win. And I think that this is a decent spot for him to get it. All right. And then uh, scrolling on down, uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Um, is that it? Do we, do we go through all picks already? Let me Those see. are my four. Those are my four. Did we go through all our picks already? Yeah, we did. That's right. I forgot. I put all my picks in the same area. I usually have like a, a long shot, but um, I'll tell you right now, the long shot that I almost had is right here, Denny McCarthy. He was the one that I was Your really boy. this close to putting yeah. on my list. I just, I just, I, he was, he was my next guy. So if I would have taken yeah. someone off, he would have made it. Um, and because, we've got to keep in mind that last year he started the the, the event with a sixty in the first round, um, finished seventh, um, yeah. and he he right. does have a top ten. Uh, matter of fact, at the last signature, the Wells Fargo. Um, and, um, and he also was second at the Texas open, which is an easier golf course. So, and he's, you know, this is, this is fits him. It's this shorter course. And, uh, so I think there are a lot of things saying, yeah, maybe Denny McCarthy this week. Yeah. I, I looked at him cause I kind of thought the same thing and it doesn't, it still could be, he's just such an absurd golfer when you look at his stats. Cause like, even like he has lost strokes on approach in six straight events, but he's also like gained a ton of strokes putting in all of those. So it's like, he's like the opposite. I always say, I want like, I want these good approach players where if they can find the putter one week, they're going to win. McCarthy's like, he's a great putter. If he can find the irons one week and just be decent on approach, he's going to win. So we'll, we'll see. All right. Let's pop up actually the uh, best of the rest, uh, our extra picks. Um, and uh, I have Dietrich, Fleetwood, Lowry, and there's McCarthy and Cantley, who I spoke about. And then you have Batia, Harmon, uh, and Henley. So two of my picks. Mm-hmm. And Hovland. So you've yeah. got uh, Batia, Hovland, who we haven't talked about. And I have uh, Dietrich, Fleetwood, and Lowry, who we have not yet talked about. So, uh, yeah. Uh, w- w- out of those, uh, out of that group, well, out of those two, talk about right. well of course you've talked a lot this year uh, about Batia. uh we yeah. know how much you like him um so uh, why do you like him on this on this golf course uh it, really a number thing for me last i checked he was 90 to 1 um, he's also one of the most accurate drivers on tour and w- that's important this week on a shorter course you want to keep it in the fairway club down all that stuff so i think it's a good yeah i mean i, I think 80 to 1 is still a pretty good number for Akshay. i think he, he should be lower so i think that's a good bet Hovland, I mean, I considered making my card like Cantlay, Hovland, and maybe one other guy. I think that's viable this week. Um, you know, Victor's U.S. Open, I obviously didn't get a lot right at the U.S. Open, but I feel like I got Victor Hovland right because it was totally the short game. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he gained – he gained. I mean, not, not that the ball striking was awesome. I will say it was kind of subpar for him, but he, he gained a half stroke off the tee. He gained 2.1 strokes on approach. He even gained putting. He lost three and a half strokes in, in two rounds around the green. Um, now again, that that was the that was the short grass chipping that he struggles on. But we're kind of back this week to the thick rough around the green that we saw at Memorial. That that stuff he's okay short game wise. So I, I think he'll bounce back this week. Would not be surprised at all if he ends up winning. So I think Hovland. I think he's still twenty to one. Right? I think I think I think going Victor and Cantlay, just going those two um, big guns, is definitely a viable betting strategy this week. Yeah. Well, and keep in mind uh, just. Uh... Batia, 50, 80 to one. He wins Texas. I, I, mm-hmm. I mentioned McCarthy, uh, who was second at Texas. So, yep. 
Um, and again, that, that's a, it's a relatively easy golf course is why I bring that up. Because uh, we haven't really seen many easy golf courses uh, since Texas. Uh, I'm not even sure if we have seen one um, since Texas. So, uh, yeah. That, and Batia is trending in the right direction as well. Um, there's Dietry. And look, for me, I'm at the point now where, uh, because he played so well again at the U.S. Open, and yeah. he, he's now played, he's 14th at the U.S. Open, 4th at PGA, he he broke out of course at Pebble with that fourth. Um, he's trending. His trend line is, is 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 nice. He did miss the cut last year, but I'm not worried about that. Um, mm-hmm. Look, he's a hit and miss guy. I get that. That's just the way he is. He's never won yet. That's also you know to win a signature. But he he's been competing yeah. in these big events, and you know seeing Pavone win an event Pebble. No, who did he? What did he win? Uh, Tory Pines. Tory Pines, and then pretty much do nothing, and then yeah. be on the final pairing at the U.S. Open. I mean, yeah. if he can do that, then Dietrich can win, and uh, and then we'll look back at his resume and say it's better. So I think uh, I think anything's possible. We saw Matt Kattire get a win. Of course, I'm talking yeah. about these European Tour players who've come over here. And have shown that even though they don't have a bunch of wins on the European tour, uh, they can get it done here. Well, Dietrich has zero wins on the DP World Tour. I they they said that during the broadcast over the weekend. I think it was Saturday when he was still, that's he was in the mix this past weekend and he disappeared. I I couldn't believe when they said that, that this guy hasn't even won it on the DP World Tour. He has a Challenge Tour win and he has some Australian Tour win. It looks like, but so I mean that that worries me. It's a hundred to one, so like you're not you know. You're, doesn't kill you if the guy blows another one, but he's yeah. just it, his play. His play when he's in the mix, um, even just this year on the PGA Tour, has been um, pretty pretty tough to watch. And then a couple others. Uh, again, for me, um, uh, I, I went ahead and put uh, Fleetwood in there. I think he is, you know, thirty five to one, and Lowry okay. too at seventy to one. Uh, mm-hmm. And Fleetwood, uh, even though he hasn't had done much here. One top 15. He's trending well coming in. And he's made 14 of his 15 cuts this year, including the Dubai win. Um, meanwhile, Lowry, you're getting double the money. Uh, let's see. Where's Lowry? Where, where, I guess I must have missed him. Where is Lowry? There he is. He's now down to 60 to 1. I believe he was 70. He was 19th here last year. And he was 19th last week, which is pretty good for Shane Lowry. But the thing I'm a little bit concerned with, with Lowry is – is he's usually better, as we know, on the tougher golf courses, not the easy exactly. ones. So yeah, that'd be my concern with him. Can he make enough pots? Same kind of deal. Um, I got I got three um, super bomb long shots that I was looking at today. Okay, uh, I didn't even put them on our on our list, but uh, Adam Svensson, my boy, who has started to play better lately and is a short course specialist. Um, Lee Hodges, who I know you bet. Um, I think a couple weeks ago, he, you know, he's still been hitting, you know, he, he had, he had a tough Memorial, but you know, that's, that's Memorial. Not, you know, he, he's not at that level yet, I think, but on a, a course like this, I think suits his game a lot more. And then um, Emiliano Grio has started to figure it out. He was, he'd been bad for a while. I think that's why last I looked, he was like 250 to one, but you, you look at the numbers. He, he started to figure it out. The off the tee, the last two weeks has been like neutral. And then the iron game has actually been pretty good for about a month now. So, I mean, Grio's a guy that just won last year. And like when he, he's another guy, you want him on these short uh, positional type golf courses. So I think Grio is someone um, that the odds haven't caught up yet to the fact that he's starting to play a bit better. Yeah. His game definitely disappeared. We expected a lot more from him. Um, and he got off to a good start too. Uh, earlier this year, things were really looking good, mm-hmm. and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, um, right around it looks like right around players, he just mm-hmm. lost his game, and it really hasn't come back. I guess until it's starting to show now. So yeah, it is. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see, and just uh, see if there's anyone else. Um, since it's a signature event, there really isn't anyone else that I that I was looking at that I could say, hey, here's a long shot to consider. So let's take a look at yep. the. Um, one and done's uh, before we wrap up, and so there are your three: uh, Oberg, Cantlay, and Hovland, and mine: Cantlay, Finau, and Matsuyama. So, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the thing with this is, once again, the Cantley factor. So mm-hmm. in our yeah. league, I noticed that he's he's uh, only sixty five percent have 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 taken him already. So that's pretty have good. Taken him or he's sixty five percent available? No, sixty five percent have taken him. Really? Yeah, he's only got thirty five percent left. Huh? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I thought he was going to be the most popular pick this week, but that obviously makes it tougher for him to. Uh. Yeah. Where did everyone use him? Where did everyone use him? (laughs) Well, there have been a couple of golf courses that he's had really good histories at. So uh, I know his game wasn't playing well, but I guess they just decided, well, the golf course is good, so we'll take him there. But, yeah, Yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised, too. Uh, But, yeah, that's why this would probably be a good week because now in our league at least, because with only 35% left, uh, why not try to take advantage of that? So. Yeah, it's interesting. I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I still think he's going to be popular. You know, thirty-five percent of people have him left. You know, yeah, most of them, most might, of them will take him. This half week. of us might use him. Yeah, and I and I I've official I've like I've switched mindsets on one and done because I went I went Brooks last week and Bryson was pretty damn popular in our pool, so I've I've like fallen behind again. So I'm back to like trying to trying to make sure I'm different with my picks. Um, so does that mean you're looking more so towards kinda, Oberg or Hovland? I think I'm leaning towards Hovland. I don't think he's going to be that popular, right? Kind of coming off a disappointing U.S. Open. A very I, I agree. Cup, I think right? most people will take yeah. Oberg. Yep. Yeah. So I so I think I think Hovland's where I'm leaning right now. Hope hopefully he's you know less than ten percent owned. Yeah. If I was going to take someone and not and go with Cantley just because of like you said, same thing. I mean, I'd have to get some really weird ones. I'd probably. Yep. Um, I mean, obviously, Finau would probably be the way to go in that respect. Yeah, um, I think so. But, uh, you know, I, I, even though I feel more confident with Matsuyama than Finau, but yeah, uh, Finau probably isn't going to be on uh, a lot of people's, uh, you know, short list this week based on his resume on the golf course. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot of other players that you can consider. As far as the other big names, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just not feeling it with, with uh, I mean, Morikawa does not have a good resume on this golf course at all. Um, that's, Surprisingly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be good here, but let's see. I mean, uh, the, right now, Thagala, Justin Thomas, Wyndham Clark, Max Homa. These uh, jo- I forget Jordan Spieth. I mean, these guys right. are just not on their game right now. Uh, too much, too much inconsistency at best. Yeah, yeah side so, so side so one that I think is close is like I don't think he's not he's not playing great right now, but he's also not playing poorly. I'm also like not not worried about him. And he, he has unfinished business here because he lost to Xander in 2022, I think it was. Right? I mean, I mean, oh, up. okay. That was that. It yeah. was, tw- that was here. That was at this golf he, course. Okay. That was here where he had a one shot lead on 18 and made double bogey to lose it. Yeah. He got, that he one. got screwed. He put, it, he, put it, he put it in a fairway bunker and got, I think he was like under <laughs> the lid or something, kind of got screwed. But so, yeah. you know, he obviously has um, at least once played well here. So he yeah. used someone I looked at, but um, the number was a bit too low for me. Yeah, that's the thing because uh, the the fact that you're talking about that see, that's the problem is is some of these guys they're just not playing well enough and even though the numbers okay the like the guys that we took are playing much better they're just are they're right. getting the same yep. odds uh, yep. and again that's why it's tough to handicap these things because it'll be the guy that's not playing well that'll go ahead and win you can't predict sure. that so hopefully not uh, hopefully yeah not, right. But there you go. There's the Gala, 30 to 1. Justin Thomas, who has no right being 35 to 1 with the rest of these guys, the way, the way he's playing. I mean, mm-hmm. Jordan Spieth. Should... He's, hurt. he's just hurt. He's just hurt. It's he... just the wrist. But speaking of that, yeah, John Rahm just did not even uh, get to play. We were talking about that last week. We weren't sure, yep. I think, at the time of our conversation if he was going to play last week. Right. Yeah, he, yeah he, he withdrew Tuesday night, I think, right? Yep. Yeah, it must have been. And then even even Wyndham at fifty to one, it's like, yeah, you might as well still be seventy to one because you know you haven't done anything. Yeah, he's another one. He said in his uh, press conference before last week that he'd be happy just to make the cut, which he did. So you know maybe he's trending in the right direction, <laughs> but definitely doesn't seem like he's ready to win again. Horschel's playing. Taylor's struggling. Horschel's playing well. Yeah, seventy to one's not bad on him. Yeah, Horschel's playing. The only thing is he already has a win this year, even though it was in a opposite yeah field. Yep. Still, it's kind of hard for me to envision Billy Horschel winning twice yeah. in one year. But um, 
Yeah, and then there's some of our players that we've talked about this year. Austin Eck wrote, you know, uh, you can see him. You know, you're getting a uh, good number there at 130 to one. Keeping mm-hmm. in mind that this is a uh, a signature event. Uh, I, I, does this guy is he getting like a waiver or something? Because he he, he had that yeah. great run a couple of years ago when he finished fourth. Yeah, I'm, I don't know how that works exactly. I yeah, think it must be a sponsor's invite or something. Yeah, he must have like somehow he found a way to get in that because he's still an amateur, I believe. Oh, he, well, oh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you know his fourth came here. Did you know? Yes, that? that's what I was saying. That's, that's okay. why I'm yeah, guessing okay. that maybe because of that right. they're bringing him back or something like that. So yeah, well, he also played here last year and missed a cut. So um, yeah, okay. three, three years in a row he'll have played here. Eric Cole's been awful. 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 All right, so there you go. Uh, that is what is happening uh, with the Travelers. Now, uh, coming up, we have uh, a breather. Uh, we knew this was going to happen. I have no idea what to expect with the field next week. Uh, I, I feel sorry for uh, <laughs> who, who put this uh, uh, Rocket Mortgage event together, but uh, somebody had to Somebody had to be there, and it was yep. Rocket Mortgage. And then you have John Deere, to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure that's going to be much better. Uh, because after yeah. that, you're going to fly to uh, – because you got the next week is you're going to go to uh, Scotland. And then a lot of players are playing in, Scot- in the Scottish Open now and preparing yeah. for the Open Championship. So – we got a couple of uh, kind of off weeks, but use, yeah, we can use we could use a breather. Yeah, you know. sure, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, you know, it gives us an opportunity to watch a lot of other guys uh, who we haven't really seen that uh, are you know are still capable of winning, and uh, you know, maybe it might even be a little bit uh, easier for us uh, to make some money because you're not going to have all these big hot shots playing. So, all right, so that's going to be next week, the next couple of weeks, uh, and then again uh, before you know it. It's the Scottish Open and the Open Championship back to back. Matter of fact, what is uh, what, what, what's anything going on with the uh, futures? With the, uh, you know, I have zero future. I have zero futures for the Open Championship. I've had futures for the first three majors, but I have, I have a clean card for this one. So, you know, I always feel a bit lost. I always feel a bit lost at the Open just because these you know the courses are you know we I feel like we know know less about them. So, I'll, we'll try to do our research uh, in the next few weeks here. Oh, look, DeChambeau. Hey, there's Bryson. Bryson's <laughs> Ahead of Xander. What's that? Oh, yeah, 14. Ahead yeah. of Xander. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hovland, 18. Again, he's played well with the Open happens. Championship. He's never won a major. Fleetwood, look at him getting 22 to 1. Oof, no thanks. He plays really well at the, at the Open, but, yeah, that's yeah. a low number. No thanks. And uh, I don't know what Speed's doing at twenty five to one. Yeah, these 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 all seem pretty bad at this point. I would definitely not be making bets at this point unless you find someone hiding down here. But look at the defending champ at sixty to one. Mm. Sam Burns at sixty five. The Gala at sixty five. I was say Sa- Sa- should be good at opens too, just with his short game. And uh, Cam Young's yeah. another guy who's just completely lost it. Yeah, yeah, yep, he is. That's too bad. Patrick Reed, it looks like we'll see. I, I guess he, is he going to play? In? I don't know. I mean, I, I, well, that's that's what you got to be careful with future. Is you, if you bat Reed and he doesn't play, you lose the future. And uh, oh yeah, Ustazen, he is playing so well on Live. I would imagine he's, he's going to play in the Open Championship. Major. Hopefully, I'd, I'd like to see him. Yes, yeah, so he would be right there. I might have yeah. even. I think I already have a future on him. So uh, I think I got a hundred to one on him. Is he uh, definitely qualified? I can't imagine he's a champ, and it's or, I can't imagine they're going to be uh, dickish to him like the PGA Tour um, yeah. USA events. I'm sure they're going to do whatever they can to get Louis Ustazen in there. So, but we'll see. Hope so. Yeah, he should he should be in there. Yeah. So keep that in mind. But I think right there, I'll tell you the truth, I think he's the best bargain right there, and and, and all the players we've just looked at. Yeah, I would go. Yeah, I, agree. With, I would go with Louis Uses and the way he's playing. Yep. I All agree. right, but anyway, that's coming up. We'll we'll talk more about the futures at the Scottish Open week, uh, and uh, give you a little bit more of an idea because we'll also, um, you know, talk. We'll have a little bit more time to take a look at the golf course the, over over there uh, for the Open Championship and. Um, and see who fits and all that. So, because we'll have our, we'll have, we'll pretty much know what we're gonna do for the Open Championship Scottish Open week. And then that'll give us an opportunity to say, okay, this is what we're already looking at. 
uh, for mm -hmm. next week. And, and um, you know, just in case anybody wants to get a head start uh, and, and think that they're going to get some, uh, you know, edge on some of those odds. So um, uh, just make sure, of course, you subscribe here to the channel. Uh, we also uh, want you to uh, not only subscribe to Prime Sports Network, but also to Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. And uh, that's our official golf channel uh, with Hall of Famer Jan Stevenson. Uh, and then uh, uh, Jared and I, actually, if you're into football, Jared and I are going to talk some football. We're going to talk some dynasty fantasy football, uh, of course, uh, with the partnership we have with the R Lads uh, and uh, Draft Sharks. So if you're a dynasty fantasy football fan, stay tuned on Friday. We're doing, a, I think it's going to, actually, it's probably going to be a live show. So a lot of our shows on R Lads have been live on that channel. So uh, I think we've already decided to do a 10 o'clock show on, on Friday. So if you're into that, check us out. Uh, and, and, and for golf, uh, just leave a question, comment, anything at all regarding maybe anything that we haven't talked about. If you have something on your mind you would like uh, some advice on uh, or anything at all, just let us know. So, Jared, appreciate your time as always. Yep. Thanks, Greg. You got it. And we'll see everybody next time.